Thanks, folks. So about six months ago, Yuji presented at a Kiverno community meeting, and he talked about you know, YAML signing. And the first question you know, when we were kind of discussing this is we were asking, well, why would you want to do that? Why sign YAMLs? What's the benefit? And what can we derive from this? And of course, once we got past that discussion, the next thing that came up is, well, how does this actually work? What does it mean to sign a YAML manifest? How do you get this into your cluster and verify at the right levels? So we're gonna cover those things today. We'll also discuss you know, some of the challenges with signing and verifying YAML files or resource manifests in Kubernetes. And then we'll you know, end with a full demo of how this flows end to end using a six store CLI as well as Kiverno which is a validating admission controller that runs inside your clusters. So let's start with the why, right? So why would you want to sign YAMLs? And just to kind of recap, signing anything gives you three things. The first thing is it makes sure that what you, the data you're receiving, the message or payload is authentic. It comes from who you think it comes from. The second is it, it makes sure that the, it hasn't been tampered with. So there's integrity protection. And finally, it also makes sure that you know, once something is signed, you cannot kind of go back and renege on that or change that. So those are the three things you would get with signing pretty much anything. Now, putting this in the context of Kubernetes, you know, like it or not, most Kubernetes resources are declared as YAML manifest files. In most cases, maybe perhaps not in all, these would be um, you know, in a Git repo somewhere, and you're gonna use a GitOps controller to push these YAML manifests into your cluster. And then uh, controllers within your cluster are gonna look at that declared state and the current state of the system and reconcile the two. So in Kubernetes, driving its declarative configuration through YAMLs becomes pretty much the standard practice. Um, so putting you know, that together with now signatures, the benefits you're gonna get is you're gonna make sure that the data in those YAMLs, the contents of your resource manifest is authentic. Uh, it hasn't been tampered with once it's deployed into the cluster. And you can also make sure that you know, you're, you're preventing any inadvertent or unauthorized changes which may occur in your cluster itself. So signing can also be used to uh, build some pretty interesting workflows like approvals if you want you know, multiple signatures before a resource is deployed, you can do that. Or if you just wanna prevent you know, some resource from being going into production until your QA or your production team signs off on it. All right, so you know, hopefully that gives you an idea of why we would wanna do this or why sign uh, you know, resource manifests. So diving into the how, and you'll see some of this live in a demo itself, but the two components we're gonna use in the demo, so there's a six store CLI, so this is in a repo uh, under the six store um, repository, it's KAS manifest six store. And what this does is it contains pretty much a command line as well as a library, everything you would need to sign and verify YAML resources. So it builds on top of Cosign, um, it has you know, logic uh, you know, to, to be able to inspect the YAML, to be able to you know, convert that into a couple of hashes, which are ingested in the YAML file itself, so you end up with annotations within the YAML file, which are then used for verification. The other component you would see is Kiverno, which runs as an admission controller inside your cluster. So Kiverno can act as a validating as well as a mutating webhook. Um, its role is to be able to inspect any admission request, apply your configured policies, in this case, it would be a policy which, you know, for signing your YAML files itself. And you can also you know, generate resources, but that's uh, obviously a different use case from what we'll look at today. So putting that all together, um, in the end-to-end -end flow, typically in your CI CD pipelines or you know, based on your approvals workflow, you would use a CLI or some tool like you know, a GitHub action which would do the signing, much like you would for a image signature. And then once that resource is deployed, it's pretty much self-contained. There's no additional fetch which happens from an OCI registry, which is slightly different from an image validation workflow. But given every, all of the data and these annotations which are inserted into the YAML, 
what we'll be able to do is then verify the contents and either allow or deny that request. Now, this request may also originate inside the cluster. So in case somebody edits that YAML, it would be, you know, you would be able to deny that if it wasn't signed and didn't flow through the right phases of your deployment pipeline. So given that, you know, UG is gonna dive in into details about some of the challenges encountered while building this solution, and then we'll look at a live demo itself. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Okay, so let me introduce uh, a bit, little bit detail of the, how the side this mechanism works. Uh, first, signing YAML manifest. Uh, this is a uh, tool of the CLY, uh, the, uh, actually the kubectl plugin. The, it's uh, ori original, uh, some annotation is in, in, uh, in injected to the original YAML, man YAML manifest. Basically get the uh, YAML manifest body and uh, encode, the, uh, it's signed by the cosine sign below command. Yeah. Then it uh, encoded uh, message and encoded signature is embedded in the, into the sig uh, annotation. So the, to verify this uh, signed YAML manifest, the, the, there are three steps. The first step is uh, pull, pull, pull the uh, encoded message from the annotation, then check the signature, uh, signature uh, of against uh, this uh, encoded manifest, uh, YAML manifest. So then, okay, sorry. Then, the, once the, the encoded YAML manifest is correctly signed, then uh, compare the, uh, the YAML manifest and uh, encoded YAML manifest. Uh, the, it, to, those two manifest is matched, uh, the check, is checked to if the, the, those two content are matched. So, the, this mechanism is actually embedded into in the Kiberno uh, uh, control. So, the, to to configure the uh, this uh, signature verification, the, we can use the Kiberno policy. So, actually, the uh, new declaration uh, validate manifest is defined by this. So, the uh, normal. And so the must so resource to be to be signed is specified, and also the as public key is specified in this policy. So uh, this policy has another uh, extended use case like the list of list of keys and multiple signature verification, and the more comp more complex case is uh, logical uh, and or operation of the between the uh, keys. So that is, uh, you can define that uh, kind of complex uh, case in, in this given policy. So the challenge to verify that this uh, YAML manifest signature, the in admission controller is uh, uh, mute, uh, mutation. So the, uh, when you uh, up create, uh, apply, uh, send the request from the uh, kubectl command, uh, kubectl command something, so the uh, original YAML manifest is not coming to the uh, uh, admission control po point. So the, some mutation happened before, the, uh, before that uh, uh, check, the, like the uh, native uh, admis uh, admission control or third party admission control may introduce some mutation to the original YAML manifest. So the thing to thing verifying the con uh, YAML manifest, the, we need to think, uh, consider how, which part is uh, uh, generated from the, uh, those uh, trusted uh, admi uh, admission controller, or the, this, this change is not allowed or not. So that, that uh, uh, consideration is required. So the solution is, uh, first solution is you can specify the which, which part of the uh, uh, Miss, uh, manifest can be uh, should be ignored. So maybe that that's some uh, you can specify the this this um, mutation uh, is introduced by the some 
uh, native Kubernetes admission control, or maybe you, you, if you know you, you have some uh, your own uh, custom admission controller, you can specify that the uh, ignore uh, configuration. Okay, that is one approach. Another approach is uh, dry run and uh, uh, compute deep. So, so this is uh, 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 approach to compute uh, diff, diff by using the uh, dry run uh, output. So uh, I will explain later, but uh, this, the, uh, this approach is pretty good because uh, you don't need to specify the, uh, which part should be ignored because uh, the expected mutation is automatically computed by the dry run in the admission control case. So that part is good. Uh, but uh, but uh, another requirement is uh, the, you need to add some, addition, you, you need to put additional permission to the uh, KVL admission control. The, actually, the, you need to do the dry run in the admission control, so the create permission is required. So, but uh, by using this dry run, you can uh, remove the uh, uh, cost of specifying the each uh, individual ignore, ignore configuration. So approach is like this. So the admission request come, but the admission before coming to the admi uh, admission request is coming to the Kiberno. The, the some attribute, uh, some um, uh, label or uh, annotation or some part of the uh, YAML manifest is mutated, maybe added something. So, but uh, this change is also computed in the, uh, 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 in the dry run in the admission control. Run. So then you can, you can compare those two. So dry run result and uh, coming the admission control result. Then the, uh, you, can, you can automatically filter the uh, uh, expected, uh, expected mutation. So let me, let me show the demo. So now, so now this policy is okay. Okay, this is a, a policy already deployed in this uh, uh, cluster. So the, this policy specifies uh, which resource should be protected and the public key here. And Okay, so this is a sample deployment, and I want to deploy this uh, deployment configuration, but uh, I already set the policy. So, so, to, so policy says the signature is must be provided for the so for this uh, deployment. So, if I create. Uh, this YAML, YAML manifest deployment to the target system. So this Kiberno automatically protect the, deny this request because the signature is not provided. So next, I will do the, uh, put the signature to the uh, original, uh, this YAML file. Then. This is a generated uh, YAML, uh, YAML manifest, so some annotation is already included here. So if I apply, now I, I did, previously I did this one, but uh, if I use the signed YAML manifest, the, this, creation, the, this uh, deployment is also successfully de uh, deployed. So the deployment is already running. So now I, if I, so this is expected. So I successfully deploy, but maybe later someone comes, comes in, then change, change the configuration. For example, 
I will start the edit the Okay, this part, allow privilege escalation. This part is originally set as by true, but uh, if I change this part by true. Then, then this edit is pro, uh, uh, de, uh, prevented uh, because uh, as you can see that this part, uh, originally the, this value is false, but the, after the two, so this part is not, uh, uh, this part is the gap be from the signed state. So this is prevented. So that's a uh, demo. So just to quickly recap, I guess, in the last section, yeah, what we saw was by signing and verifying your YAML manifests, what that will let you do is protect critical resources. Um, it's probably not the best idea to use this for every resource in your cluster, but certainly things like cluster roles, policies, et cetera, you might want to protect uh, and make sure that those are signed and you know, uh, can be can not tampered or not changed uh, later in your pipeline itself. The signing and verification is pretty simple. Six door, of course, cosign can sign everything, so you know, might as well use it, and it's using the, the, you know, the blob signature format underneath, so you can utilize that um, to sign, and then you can use admission controllers like Kiverno to do the verification in the cluster itself. So certainly, you know, feel free to you know, either reach out on the Kiverno channel or on the cosign channel uh, if you have any questions or would like to see any other examples of using this. Um, also want to give a quick um, shout out to Rico. She did most of the implementation for this feature. Unfortunately, she couldn't attend, but uh, you know, it was a fantastic job in getting this implementation in. And feel free to reach out to either UG or I if you have any other questions. And uh, if you have a few minutes, happy to answer any right now. So the example user deployment, but it could be you know, any resource. Typically, you might want to choose a few resources in your cluster that you're signing, protecting in this manner. Um, certainly, if it's a deployment of something that um, is critical, like a security tool, would make perfect sense, but um, could also be done at a pod level and matching a particular namespace. So really a lot of flexibility in that. So, sorry, was your question uh, if you, yeah. So, yeah, and it's interesting, uh, you know, with um, GitOps and uh, it's something to kind of, you know, obviously you're, you're mutating the YAML, you would probably want to do this on a pre-commit at the right point in your life cycle, right? So, yeah. Yes. You can, and that is an uh, interesting case. So you could have a policy which verifies every other policy, including itself. So then the only thing you're really getting from that because that policy is already deployed is you're preventing somebody from changing that policy.
Any other questions or if not then oh go ahead. Yeah. We need to have the, the original content to match the mutated one and the original one. So that's the reason. Yeah, one of the other schemes we had explored is if there's some other way to get a canonical form of the resource, but it becomes a pretty hard problem, right? Because uh, you need to know what the actual initial form was and strip out all of the other things that could have changed in, in your pipeline or through other mutating controllers or in cluster controllers. Like when a pod gets deployed, it's amazing how much stuff gets added by just the standard controllers and uh, all of that needs to be ignored. Yeah. So when you're trying to get this, you're, you're verifying the initial example text, right? Correct. And then you need to do some kind of comparison of the initial versus actual example that you have. Yeah. And you need to find the fields for it. Anyway. Basically checking the uh, field by field uh, then by considering the ignore configuration. Yeah, so you could configure the policy to ignore some set of fields if you know that some other cluster controller will change those. Or you could do the dry run if you're confident you're gonna get back the same results. And that's typically the easier way to get started is with the dry run, but uh, e either scheme works or a combination. Yeah. All right, well, thank you. Thank you.